This is the Online Learning Podcast, episode number 11. Are you making the most of the person you can be? Online learning is your gateway to expanding your horizons in a direction you may not even have thought of. Hello, I'm John Colley. Here on the Online Learning Podcast, we challenge you to find the online learning courses to take you to your next level. Expert in something? Why not create your own course and monetize that expertise? Come on, open this door with me and step inside the Online Learning Podcast. Hello, I'm John Colley and this is the 11th episode of the Online Learning Podcast. Today I've got a very interesting interview with freelance graphic designer Tara Roskill for you and we're going to have a very good look at her course which is all about how to design a logo and her course which is to do with designing a letterhead. So we've got uh, plenty to discuss but before we do that let's take a look at this week's marketing tip of the week. And now, the Online Learning Podcast's Marketing Tip of the Week. In this week's Marketing Tip, I'd like to talk to you about SlideShare. Now, the most important thing to know about SlideShare is that it is a property that is owned by LinkedIn, and the two are very closely connected. So when you upload a slide deck, a PowerPoint, or a keynote presentation to SlideShare, uh, you can, of course, also upload videos and the like, but, but, but the, 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 the presentations are free. When you upload those, you have the ability to share them with your LinkedIn contacts and with your LinkedIn groups, which is a very powerful tool. Now, what I suggest you do is you create some form of informative and helpful uh, outline or guide to your course that gives a certain amount of information and value to the people who read it. And make sure that you have a link to the course embedded, uh, if not on every page, then certainly at the beginning and at the end of your slide share deck. So when the first page comes up and that's the, the, the image that people see, they can clearly see uh, how to find your Udemy link. Um, that can then be shared to your LinkedIn uh, groups and to your LinkedIn connections, and that's another great way to promote your course. So this week, you get your presentation up onto SlideShare, which you can find at slideshare.com, and then you share that information, you share that um, slide deck with your LinkedIn connections to spread the word even further. Hope you find that useful. If you do, do let me know. You can reach me, john at jbdcolley.com. Dot com, and I would love to hear about your marketing tips. And if I use one in a future episode, I'll certainly give you a credit for it. Now it's time for this week's interview. And I'm very excited to have a freelance graphic designer uh, par excellence uh, Tara Roskill joining us today and she's going to talk um, about how she got into creating online courses and her particular expertise in the design area which I'm sure you're going to find extremely interesting. So let's go ahead and meet Tara. And now it's time for this week's course creator interview. On today's interview for the online learning podcast I'm delighted to welcome Tara Roskill. Now Tara is a freelance graphic designer and has got a fascinating course um, up on Udemy uh, all about logo design so I thought she'd be an excellent guest to get on and um, perhaps we can learn a little bit about logos today so Tara welcome to the online learning podcast thanks very much John thanks for having me it's a pleasure to, to, to have you on I really appreciate your time can we start by just um, telling everybody a little bit about who you are and what you do just to, to warm things up yeah, I mean, I, I live in the UK. I'm a freelance graphic designer. I think I've been designing probably for about 20 years now. I worked my way up through sort of local design agencies before eventually go, going it alone. And I've probably been on my own freelancing probably for eight or nine years now. Oh, right. OK. And, and so you, do you work from home or do you have a, a, an office somewhere? <laughs> Yeah, I've, I just work from home. I've got a home office. Um, I do a mixture of work both for other agencies, design agencies, kind of overflow, that sort of thing, and also for um, local businesses as well. All right. Very interesting. So how did you trans transmute that from um, working for clients to getting into doing courses online? 
Um, well, I kept on seeing, uh, well, I was originally I was blogging. I, I used to write a graphic design blog. And one of the big topics that people seemed to be interested in there was how to learn from home. And what I noticed from sort of courses I was looking at, because obviously I was trying to keep up with things, was the majority were about learning how to use software. So you could easily learn how to use Adobe Illustrator, there'd be video courses, but there was very little that actually taught you how to design and how to think. So that's how I got um, thinking about the idea. Oh, right. And, and so you've, you've um, created, uh, what, two courses at the moment on, on Udemy? Yeah, I created two courses. One is on logo design for beginners. It's called How to Design Logo Beginners Course. And the other one is uh, How to Create Letterheads. So what's, what's the difference? I mean, when you talk about a letterhead, are you talking about the sort of the address section at the top of a letter? Well, uh, the logo is obviously how, you know, how do you create your, the look of your logo. And then the letterhead is, say, once you design your logo, how would you lay that out on the page? Because obviously some you have... Um, different positioning quite often you'll have maybe a, t a tint sort of a ghosted watermark of it and i just try to give some ideas by how you develop once you've got your logo how you would then use that to create your letterhead okay so you're getting the sense that i know absolutely nothing about this so i need to, do, <laughs> need to <do> explain it <laughs> um so the of the two courses um as i understand one is free and the other one is paid and we're going to spotlight on the paid one today aren't we yeah that's, that's so, good so for which, me which, yeah. which is which the paid one is a logo design course, which goes uh, a lot more in depth than the less head one. Okay, so I'll make sure there are obviously links to both of these and also to the to the free course. Um, but let's focus in then on the uh, logo design course. Could you just, without obviously giving away all the trade secrets, could you just talk a little bit about <laughs> um, what the course covers and and what somebody thinking about maybe taking the course um, would find when they look at the course outline? <laughs> Yeah, what I've tried to do is demystify the whole process because, as I mentioned before, the, the stuff you can find online is generally, you know, how to learn software. Or you might find something that shows you a logo and how to design that specific logo. Now, what I've tried to do is actually take... I've done a live... There's a brief, a brief of the client in the course, mm -hmm. and then it works through from taking that client brief all the way to coming up with a finished logo. But along the way, I'll actually show you how to... I'm very much a person who likes sort of sketching to get down rough ideas quickly. So I'll show someone how they can get ideas, um, how to sketch them out, and then how to work up on the computer. So we literally go through the whole thing. And I've also included sections on um, how to quote for the design. So I'm hoping it's like a complete course for someone who's... Whether you've done it before or you haven't, it, it actually goes through the entire process and demystifies it. Oh, wow. And do, does that mean you need any specialist hardware? I mean, do you use bamboo tablets or anything like that? Um, no, I've just, I, I use uh, Adobe Illustrator, which I would recommend for logo design. Right. But obviously, if you, haven't, if you haven't got that, you can actually get a month's trial. So if you did want to try it out, you could... Um, just use that for a month, try it out, see if you liked it. And Adobe now do a um, subscription scheme, mm -hmm. so you can pay by the month to use their software. Uh, and really, apart from a computer, um, a mouse, uh, a bit of creativity, uh, mm -hmm. that's all you need. Oh, brilliant. Excellent. Because, I, I mean, again, I've, I've got the drawing capabilities of a, of a, a sort of four-year-old, I think. Um, I can do <laughs> stick men, and that's, that's about it. So <laughs> I'm always in well, awe I mean, when people create things on a page, you know, graphically. You actually, uh, I mean, a lot of designers, well, not all designers, but some designers cannot actually draw that well. Uh, and I mean, because obviously some of it is more about typography and how to use, sort of, you, know, you know, letters and fit them together. So you don't necessarily have to be an amazing sort of artist to do it. Um, obviously, it takes practice and learning to balance things. Um, but I think really there's different levels, obviously, people can go to. But I think everybody can, you know, can have a go. Mm. And, and how, how long does the course take to do? Um, I think overall it's, it's a couple of hours. But, I mean, I've got downloads in there. So there's a, a 60-page e-book in there. But it all depends how you want to do it, whether you're going to... Obviously, if you're going to do your own logo rather than literally follow sort of what I do, mm -hmm. that's obviously going to take you a bit longer because obviously you're going to sit there. I mean, if I was just designing logos myself, you know, I'd probably sit there for a day coming up with ideas. So it all depends how you want to do it, really. Okay. And, and I mean, how many... Actually, sorry. 
So the actual physical content is probably about two hours. Yeah, that's, two hours that's, long. That, that's. I mean, I know from experience that takes an awful long time to put together. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, um, who would you say this course is really aimed at? Who's your target audience? Because you, you do, you've got over a couple of thousand people who have signed up for it, haven't you? Yeah. I mean, I would, I would say it's either someone who who wants to do it just for fun they want to learn how to design their own logos or someone who is aspiring to you know eventually become a graphic designer it's not going to turn you into graphic designer overnight but i think it's going to set you up on the right route to learning how to do this it's gonna um i think more than a lot of stuff online it's at least setting you off on the right path right okay and and what sort of feedback have you had from people who have taken the course I've had excellent feedback. Um, it's, I mean, it's amazing, even the sort of first uh, couple of weeks. Um, people saying what I, what I mentioned to you before, that there's very little out there that actually teaches you design um, rather than just software, and that they, they like the bit that it teaches you the creative side as well. Mm, yeah, yeah, I mean... I mean, I think... I, yeah. Sorry, I think I've got about... There's about sort of 90 positive comments on there, oh, yeah. which, that, you know, I'm, I'm amazed at. Question. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, no, the, the, the feedback system is really good on Udemy, isn't it? Because you do get people leaving yes. comments and ratings and things and, um, and you can interact yeah. with them and talk to them. Um, I mean, I, I had somebody left me a three-star rating on one of my courses and I just sent them a message. I said, you know, thank you for the, 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 the rating and everything. What do I need to do, in your opinion, in order to get... Not, not for you to give me to change your rating, but, but what, what, what was missing from my course that would have made you give me a four or five star rating? And I then got some ideas yeah. back, which I'm now sort of putting into the hopper to think about, you know, um, adding to the course in due course, as it were. Um, yeah, that's so <laughs> no, great. I mean, yeah, I know what you mean. I mean, I've, I've had a few people sort of, you know, um, mention things like, you know, oh, I'd love it to have this as well. Mm. And it's that thing, isn't it, where how far do you go? Because if you want to keep from beginners, you don't want to bombard someone it's a uh, you know where, where to pitch it isn't it absolutely and then then you can always put that into your next course which is for intermediates yeah yes of course yeah <laughs> and, 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 and it is a progression you know you do you can't you can't yeah. put everything into one course you're absolutely right otherwise you end up with something which is just um way 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 too long and then it's too daunting for people to take it um, yeah exactly so, so the, the, yeah you're absolutely right there is a balance so just summarize then in your view what are the what are the benefits of of doing the course if you were to sort of try, try to sort of focus down on it you know um i'm thinking about taking the course what am i going to get out of this okay i think the benefit are you'll learn how to take a brief from a client which is you know is something you'll only learn over time in general mm-hmm. um you'll learn the creative side so um say someone briefs you on a certain logo design it will teach you how to start thinking of ideas how to collect research material together that sort of thing as well as then taking that and develop it into the full logo and also how to take client sort of feedback on board because you'll always get that and uh, what happens in the best scenarios and the worst scenarios so yeah I mean I, I hope that it's as real as you could make a project Oh, um, do, do you, you know, have, if you, you actually ever, sit in there doing it. Do you ever ask any of your um, your students to send you their, their, their logos? Maybe you should run a competition. That'd be quite interesting. Well, actually, I, I did actually put up a Facebook page and a few people did uh, did send me things they did and asked me for help. As in, you know, they got to a certain point, you know, what do you think I'm doing this right? So I've, you know, just given a little bit mm-hmm. of a critique on a few. That's, that's quite interesting, yeah. You can see what, what, what's really coming out of the process, yeah. Um, yeah, that's right. Um, before we sort of start talking about um, how people can find the course, and um, I've, I've tried to twist your arm for, for a discount today, as I always <laughs> do, um, can we just talk about my... I always ask for a tip for course creators, because I like to, to try to help both people who want to take courses as well as people who are making them. So from your experience of, of making your courses, um, can you give us um, a tip that would, would help other people? Yeah, I mean, one other thing I found most helpful at the beginning, it's very similar to my graphic design process, actually, was um, to mind map. Um, and what I found was, I actually used a little uh, program called MindMeister, but there's, there's loads of different ones out there. But it, it meant that I could kind of group my ideas together, but then when I thought, oh, it doesn't quite fit and it doesn't flow well, you can easily move things about. Um, and then once you've got that, that's, that's almost like the structure of your course. So, you know, that heading on your 
chain of your mind map becomes like the main section in your sort of Udemy course. Right. Okay. And I mean, how how far do you take that? Do you do you take it to scripting, or do you just keep it to the sort of skeleton? No, I just kept it to the basic skeleton. So um, I I just put like section one is going to be this, and then I broke down that into the the areas of section one. And then I'd actually um, before I actually made my course, I'd started writing an ebook. So that had actually sort of followed my mind map. So I used that then again to go into the video course. Oh, okay. And then then you use your ebook, yes, to yeah, I, I can see. Yeah. So have, yeah. You, have you do you put your ebook out anywhere else or do you just keep it on your course? I keep it on the course as a bonus. I actually started off originally just intention t- uh, intending to write an ebook yeah. rather than actually do the video course. Mm-hmm. And I got part way through it and I thought, you know, this really it really needs video. Yeah. Uh, and I, I felt like it was a sort of a long way around of, of showing things in the book. So that's when I ended up doing the uh, video course. Yeah, I mean, video is incredibly powerful, isn't it? I mean, it's, Yeah, it really is. It's amazing how much more quickly you learn when you're watching something on video. Yeah. And you can also show something much more quickly, can't you, than sort of writing it down. It might take, you know, 10 pages to write something you could say in 20 seconds yeah. on a video. But how, how do you, I mean, how do you cope on the, what are you using ScreenFlow or how do you do it when you're, when you're trying to show your drawing? Because that can be quite a slow process. So the... I don't actually, sorry, I don't actually show the drawing as in me sitting there drawing. Right. What I show is, um, I'll show the stages where I've drawn it, but I'll use ScreenFlow, but I'll show, okay, here's the sketch stage and I'll talk through what I've done on that rough sketch stage. Because I think if I, if it showed me sitting there drawing, I mean, say, for example, I'd take um, a day to come up with some some ideas, I think everybody get quite bored. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, Unless I speeded it all up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Well, you could so you almost time-lapse it, couldn't you? <laughs> Maybe, yeah. <laughs> and there would be that little hand whizzing around the, whizzing, whizzing around the page. No, that's really good. So MindMeister... Um, I'll, I'll look out a link for that. Uh, I use FreeMind, uh, which is a free program which works on the Mac. So I'll find a link for that and put those in the show notes as well. Um, yeah, but, I think my Meister gives you three free or something, and then it's a paid program after that. Okay. You've got three well, that, yeah, that's, that's helpful as well. I imagine if it's paid, it's probably a little bit more sophisticated, but I don't know. I mean, I'm, I don't want to cast nasturtions. But as you say, there are plenty yeah. of ways. Just, just um, Google um, FreeMind mapping software, and, and I'm sure lots of stuff yeah. will come up. Yeah. Um, so can we just move on now to, to just talking about the, um, the discount that I'm going to forcefully extract from you today? Um, <laughs> yeah, no worries. <laughs> um, your, your course sells for $45. So what, what, what have you got to offer the, uh, the community today? Um, I thought 50% off for that, your audience. That's very generous. That's very kind. Thank you. So how are we going to do this? We need to create a coupon code. Yeah, I mean, and I think we discussed before maybe doing, um, what was that, it was OLP? The OLP, Online OLP. Learning Podcast, yeah. Yeah, Logo 22. OLP Logo 22. Okay, brilliant. Now, I'll create a pretty link, which will be jbdcolly.com forward slash OLP Logo 22. You'll be able to find that in the show notes. The show notes are at jbdcolly.com forward slash OLP 011 for episode 11. Now, if you use the pretty link, that will take you through the Udemy affiliate uh, system, in which case you'll be making a contribution to the podcast as well, which is very generous. If you want to uh, sidestep that, that's absolutely fine. Go and find um, Tara's course on Udemy. Just go put um, how to design the logo into the search function, and then it'll ask you for a coupon code. And if you put OLP logo 22 straight in, then the proceeds will be split between... um, Tara and Udemy and not myself or the podcast and whichever way you want to do it is absolutely fine the main thing is that you find another piece of excellent learning to take advantage of so that's brilliant um, Tara thank you very much uh, now where can people learn more about you and find you if they want to um, to delve a little bit deeper uh, they can find me on my website which is nobledesignschool.com right so it's no bull as in yeah i can know what bull is yes <laughs> design school okay and i'll put i'll put links to the uh links to that again in the show notes as well so people can can find that without any trouble 
Um, Tara, Thanks very much. It's been, been very interesting. I'm, I'm obviously going to have to go and take a look at your free course and get started. I, I don't think there's any hope of mine ever becoming a, um, a, a designer of any quality whatsoever. But hopefully with a little bit from help from you, I might, might inch my way up the, uh, up the graphic pole slightly. <laughs> Right. So, Thanks ever so much for no, talking to me. It's been brilliant to have you on, and I really appreciate your time, and um, look forward to looking out for more courses from you in the future. Thanks very much. So my thanks to Tara for her time and that fascinating interview. Clearly, there's a lot more to design than meets the eye. Um, and this is why it's so great to be able to learn from, from experts through online learning. You can find all the show notes at jbdcolleague.com forward slash 011 for episode number 11. And now let's take a look at this week's free course of recommendation. Let's take a look at this week's free course of the week. For this week's free course recommendation, I want to take you on a lifelong learning challenge. The course is called Reinventing School, a design thinking challenge. It's been created by self-styled edupunk, Brendan O'Keefe. And it is really all about getting you to think about how you can re reinvent learning to promote alternative in learning environments and to commit to equip you with, with modern skills in the 21st century that will enable you to become more expert at online teaching and online learning. Um, the course has got uh, over 7,300 uh, subscribers at the moment. It runs to over 11 hours of content with 61 lectures, so there's an awful lot here. And um, the author, Brendan O'Keefe, I think has got a very, very um, interesting background. You should go and check out his, um, his profile. He was born in Puerto Rico, but he now lives in Melbourne, Australia. And he's got a huge long list of stuff that he's dabbled in, which is really interesting. But I think it's a very stimulating course, and it's a really important uh, principle course for helping you thinking about your lifelong learning experience and the challenges that you face. So um, go and take a look at it. Reinventing School, a design thinking challenge by the edupunk Brendan O'Keefe. This week's free course recommendation. So that's it for episode 11. My thanks to Tara for her time uh, for, during the interview. And I look forward very much to seeing you again in the next episode. So that's it for another episode of the Online Learning Podcast. I really appreciate you being with me. If you enjoyed the show, I would really appreciate it if you would go over to iTunes and leave me a rating, preferably a five-star rating if you think it's worth it, and a comment. And then if you email me, john at jbdcolly.com that's julia brava delta collie.com i will send you a free coupon code to my udemy course an introduction to startups which has got 40 minutes of video teaching you all about startups so thank you very much for spending time with me today and i look forward to seeing you in the next episode this has been the online learning podcast <laughs>